Hello guys and welcome to my first Q&A video. I have recently received lots of questions about the Slovenian mountain trail and the Giro 11 and I thought I might just answer them in this video so that the information is available for everyone and I think I'm just going to dive right into the questions. The first question is specifically about the Slovenian mountain trail. I'm from Canada and mostly used to tent camping rather than paying to stay in huts. I understand in Slovenia it is technically illegal to do this, but a lot of people still use a tent anyways. So this is right. In Slovenia wild camping is prohibited, but I would say in most areas it is tolerated. One place to specifically have to be careful, and this is Triglav National Park, because this is a protected area and there's a higher fine if you get caught here. And just out of respect for nature, please stay in the huts or around the huts. So I did sleep in huts in the Triglav National Park because I did not want to risk this and I did not make reservations because on a through hike, you know, it is very hard. So mostly I got to the hut and mostly it was full. So I slept on the ground with my sleeping pad and I paid five euros. And I think this is a very good deal. There were also people who slept outside of the hut on some benches or something. And this is also an option that you can take. So please don't pitch the tent in the national park. Outside of the national park, there's lots of huts along the way. And if you want to camp in the proximity to the hut, you might just ask the hut warden if it's okay if you pitch the tent. And I think that most of the time it'll be fine. I have seen people asking the hut warden and his biggest concern was the wild animals. And this is something you know about when you go wild camping, you know about the dangers. So please just ask and then you're fine. Most of the land is privately owned, so this is why it's better to ask. Um, also, probably useful information, most of the Slovenian mountain trail is um, above 2000 meters of height. And up there it's very rocky, cast terrain, and it might be very hard to pitch a tent, especially when you have a non-freestanding tent that you put up with the trekking poles. So if you can't get the stakes in the ground, it will be hard to pitch the tent. But I think you can always do the emergency bivy or cowboy camping. But of course, pay attention to the weather because you don't want to be on a mountaintop when there's a storm at night. <laughs> so yeah, in general, I think I will go with the tent and I will try to camp. And I think if you ask the hut wardens or you make sure you're really in an area where you are hidden <laughs> from people or you just cowboy camp, then I think you'll be fine. Question two. Did you find it easy or difficult to link up with other hikers on the Slovenian mountain trail? Did groups tend to stick together? So on my through hike in 2021, I met two other hikers. That's all. Two other through hikers. I met lots of hikers, but mostly day hikers. I think this is mostly due to the fact that it was the second COVID year and not many people went on through hikes in general. I did not stick with this group of us three. <laughs> we hiked together for one, minute, one day and then we split up because we had different hiking speeds. But I was happy to have some company on this day, it was really nice. Um, I hiked together with a guy from Slovenia for like five days I think and this was really cool. He did not do the whole trail, it was also not planned to do the whole trail. And I was very happy to be with him on the scrambling and climbing parts. So. I cannot say much about the groups, but if you're hiking the Slovenia Mountain Trail this year or the Gr 11 and you have not yet found anyone to hike with and you want to, maybe you can leave a comment and connect to other people. I don't know if this works out, but yeah, if you want to, you can leave a comment. Um, number three, did you carry your own food or rely completely on the mountain huts for meals? Um, I did carry my own food, mostly because I'm vegetarian vegan, vegetarian slash vegan. <laughs> I just wanted to save some money by buying food in the stores. Sometimes I ate on the mountain huts because you can get a good meal for a good price. I think you pay around 6 euros for a soup with bread, but it's not a watery soup, it's a really good soup. <laughs> um, and sometimes I was just too lazy to cook. And when you're staying at the hut anyway, you might just as well take the food there for six euros. I think that's, that's a good price. But 
this is more like an exception. I mostly ate my own food and I'm planning to do this again on my next food hike. Also, the food carries are not very long. I think you have a maximum of four days food carry if you're hiking fast. Of course, it's less, but you will never carry food for more than five days. So it's very manageable and you can also buy snacks on the huts. So in case you run out of food, you will not be starving. Question number four, how well is the trail marked? This is a question specifically for the Slovenian mountain trail. The trail is very well marked. So you always have these red and white dots on the, on the trees or on the rocks and you can follow them very well, I would say. I lost the trail twice and it was just because I was inattentive. So once I ended up somewhere off the trail in some like rocky terrain and I was like, what is this? Then I went back and I don't know how I could not see this sign, but I was just not paying attention. So if you're paying attention to the marks, you will be fine. Question number five. Via Ferrata, did you bring your own gear and or rent it for the needed sections? Did you have any prior experience with this type of hiking ahead of time? Um, there's a problem with renting to ge the gear because when you're on a through hike, you will go along the trail and when you rent the gear somewhere, it's hard to get it back to the place where you rented it. So I would advise to bring your own gear, especially because you need it for, yeah, you need it for different parts. But they're not it's not like just one week where you need it and then not anymore you will need it a bit then you will not need it and then you will need it again so i think it's easier if you bring your own equipment i did not bring my own gear and i will not do it again because it just felt very shitty being the only person on the mountain who did not have the proper climbing equipment i only had the helmet and i would also say this is one of the most important things because there's so many rockfalls in general in the limestone mountains you have a high danger of rockfalls and also sometimes you'll be on some wall and above you there's some mountain goats and they just kick a rock <laughs> so this can happen so be careful and bring the helmet also bring the harness and the carabiners the via ferrata kit uh, because it's just better to have it also for your psychological safety like you will just feel a lot better when you have this um, did you have any prior experience? Yes, I did. I did lots of via ferratis in Austria before. I did lots of exposed hiking, but on a thrill hike it's different because you have a probably heavier backpack. You might be exhausted and tired because you already hiked every other day before and it's just better to be safe. Safety, it's cool. Question number six. Do you remember how far along the trail you first started to need the helmet and the Via Ferrata gear? Yes. Um, after Sol Chava, I think you will need it. This was my sixth or seventh day on the trail. And after Sol Chava, you were hiking through this valley and then there's this wall. It's a very steep climb in your first semi-hard section, I would say. There's lots of steel cables and because it's a very steep wall, you should wear your helmet here. And this is where I first needed the gear. I did not have the Via Ferrata kit, but if you were insecure, I think you can clip into the steel cables. But I think in this first section it's not necessary. But the days after this, you will definitely need it, especially for Koroschka and Skuta, which are two of the highest peaks in the Kamenik Alps. You will need it. And there's one more, Grintovets, after Grintovets. The descent from Grintovets to Ceska Kotra, here you will really need it. Because it's a very exposed down climb and it's very hard on your knees also. So after day seven, I think you need it. Or let's say after Solchaba, because the day depends on how fast you hike. And then I think you will not need it anymore after Triglav National Park. For the climb of like climbing on tree glove, you will need it. Um, I always see people there without having the gear. There's people trail running on here, so yeah. But there's lots of people, usually it's the highest mountain of Slovenia. And 
It's also nice to climb it before the sunrise and watch the sunrise from the peak. And if you climb in the dark especially, it's nice to have the gear, just to be safe. Question 7. <laughs> Did you like the Slovenian mountain trail more than the G11? Which was more challenging? This is a hard question and it's very... It's not easy to answer this. When I first think about which I like more, what comes to my mind is the Slovenian mountain trail. I don't know why, but whenever I think about through hiking, I think about this trail. So for me, it just has a very personal... I don't know, I just love this trail. Um, but the G11 was also amazing, it was an amazing experience. And the Pyrenees are so beautiful, just as Slovenia is so beautiful. But they are a bit different. Um, which was more challenging? They were challenging in different ways. Though the Slovenian mountain trail, I think, is more technical. You have more technical parts with scrambling and climbing, where you need the Via Ferrata kit, and you have steeper parts. So, for example, the day before Triglav, you have a part where you have five kilometers and 1,500 meters of ascent. So it's just uphill, 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 super steep, climbing, scrambling with your hands. Um, this you do not have on the G11. The G11 is more like a walk. Um, mentally more challenging for me was also the Slovenian mountain trail. Because I was alone and it was my first long through hike. But on the G11 I was facing very different challenges like being sick. And I was sick for 400 kilometers almost. And that just made it super hard because we have cramps and stomach pain all the time. Hiking is just not as nice as it would be. So, yeah, I would say the G11 is it's longer, it is less steep, but a long hike can also be challenging in different ways because you are so long on this trail. Um, the Slovenian mountain trail has a total elevation gain of 37,000 meters over the distance of 615 kilometers and the G11 has around 50,000 meters of elevation gain over 900 kilometers I think. If you calculate it the Slovenian mountain trail has more elevation gain per kilometer or let's say more elevation change per kilometer because you have 37,000 meters up and 37,000 meters down. Question number eight any tips for longer hikes in general? The first tip is make sure you have enough money because one thing you really don't want to worry about as much when you're on the trail is money and it sucks when you have to get off the trail because you run out of money. It's really shitty when your body is in good condition you feel fine but then you have to go home because you don't have money anymore. I had this on the Kungsleden and it was not nice. Also maybe if you quit your job for a long hike, make sure that you have some savings to cover the time until you start a new job. But this is really for long, long hikes. I think most of the people hiking the G11 and Slovenia Mountain Trail will not quit their job because it's a shorter hike, but long. <laughs> um, other tips, I would prepare physically for these trails because most people today have like a lifestyle where they sit a lot in front of the computer and don't move as much. So I would try in the month leading up to the trip, I would try integrating more walking and hiking into my daily life, like walking to work instead of taking the bus or people who have a car take the car. <laughs> and I would just try to do lots of day hikes maybe leading up to the trip and other physical activity like riding the bike maybe do some strength training if you want. Especially for the Slovenian mountain trail with lots of ascent, I would prepare my body a little bit. Of course, there's always people who never train for any through hike, but I think for preventing injuries, it is very useful to train a bit. Another tip for long hikes is be gentle with yourself and listen to how you feel about the hike. I think there's no reason to push through something that you don't really want to do. If you're not enjoying it, you don't have to do it. But I felt like this was a thing that many people have a problem with, and myself included, because on the GR11, sometimes, because of being sick, I just wanted to be home. I just wanted this misery to end. And 
I pushed myself through this, which in the end, I don't think it was very wise. But I mean, I made it and I'm happy that I made it. But on some days I really felt that I should just stop it because I was afraid I would cause some long-term damage or whatever because I didn't really know what I had. And I think just being in tune with yourself is very helpful to know, can I do this? Do I really want to do this? Like no one, like you don't owe anyone to finish a trail if you start it. And I think we should just be a bit kinder and gentler with ourselves. Okay, question nine. How much distance and meters of ascent did you cover each day? If I calculate the arithmetic mean of all my days, I had 1,100 meters of ascent every day and around the same of descent. And I think the mean of kilometers was like 24 kilometers a day. But I had very different days throughout the whole hike. So in the beginning, I started with a bit of shorter days. Like I tried to be um, around 20 kilometers. And I think the first two days, the first day was below 20 kilometers. And the second day was a bit above 20 kilometers. And then my third day was above 30, but that was not planned. It was just because it was a Sunday and I wanted to resupply on the day before. You have the beginning, which is relatively flat. You're on the plateau of Pohoye, and here you can really make long days if you want, but it's also the beginning of the hike. So I would suggest to start out a bit slowly and build up to longer days because your body needs to adapt to this new kind of lots of movement every day. And then you have the high Alpine part where you cannot cover such long days um, because you have these climbing parts and here you're not as fast so on these days sometimes i hiked a 10 hour day and i had like 12 kilometers or something and then i had days for example in the Triglav national park where i hiked just to the hut below Triglav, and it was a five kilometer day with 1500 meters of ascent which is climbing all day but not making much distance so in the end of the trail I think you will make up for these short days I mean not that you have to make up for them but in the end I did 30s 30s and then 40s and yeah my last day was 40 my last day was 47 kilometers and I would not have been able to do this in the beginning of the trail yeah it's very hard to say an average because it very much depends on the kind of trail and terrain and how much climbing you have and how much you can basically just walk. Question number 10. How often are you planning to do a zero day? So yeah, for everyone that's not familiar with it, a zero day is a day where you hike zero kilometers. And a zero day is a day where you hike near zero kilometers. On my Slobby Mountain Trail hike, I did not do any zero day, which I would not do again. I didn't have issues, but I think that this time that I'm hiking the trail, I will definitely take a zero day. And I would plan for a zero every at least 14 days max. So for me, it would be two zeros on the 28 day hike. Maybe I will do less or more than 28 days this time. I haven't really planned this. But yeah, I would say every 14 days, you should do a zero and whenever you're not feeling good. If you feel like you might be getting sick or you have pain in your knee, for example, maybe it's worth to have a rest day to like, don't get an overuse injury or something. Question 11. Did you ever want to give up and what did you do in these moments? Oh yes, I wanted to give up on the G11 when I was sick because I just did not recover and it was not getting better and every day was hard and I had so bad cramps and pain that sometimes I couldn't walk and I couldn't eat and I was nauseous all the time and then I had a fever and it was just not nice I was not enjoying it and I really wanted to give up but I didn't and what did I do in the moment? I called my mom and I talked to her about it and then I called my mom's friend who's a doctor and asked her if it's a bad idea to hike when you're sick because my fever was gone. You should definitely not hike with a fever. When I had the fever I was staying in a hut and I was just sleeping and I was having so much pain all over my body that I really could not hike. But after this I just had stomach pain and I was nauseous all the time and thinking I would throw up every second but I never threw up actually so it was a bit weird 
but yeah i called my mom i called my mom's friend and both advised me to get off the trail and then i made the decision to get off the trail and i suddenly realized i don't want to get off the trail i want to finish this and i know i can finish this and I, then i did finish it so yeah have a moment with yourself I needed some time alone, some time off my hiking family and yeah, then I made my decision but really have to listen into yourself what you want to do and how important is it for you to finish this trail, like you don't have to finish a trail if you're not well enough. Question 12, shoe choice and the stages for the 28 day split, um, I think I will upload a uh, the 28 day split in the description of the video so you can check what distances I made and what stages I had for the Slovenian mountain trail but I have to say that I left out one summit which is Jalovets because of very bad weather but I will include it in the in my schedule when I upload it just for you so you can plan and the shoe tries yes I have a shoe that is my shoe of choice and it is this La Sportiva Bushido 2. It's my favorite shoe, my favorite trail running shoe. I did both of the trails in these shoes. It's a trail runner from La Sportiva. I did both of my trails with these shoes. Um, this is my ninth pair now. They are fresh out of the box. I just ordered them last week, last two weeks ago, I think. And yeah, I will do the three mantra in these boys here. But I have to say, shoe trust is very personal and you definitely have to try out what works for you. Especially for the Slovenian mountain trail, you have these climbing parts where you definitely don't want a shoe that is not very stable or like a super soft shoe. It would be a disadvantage for you because you need the stability when you have to uh, go to like small steps. So yeah, make sure you have a good sticky rubber. The best for the climbing, of course, would be approach or mountaineering shoes, but you have to keep in mind that you have long walking days, then you have climbing days, and then you have walking days again. So I don't think that anyone would like to start in a shoe, then change the shoe, and then change the shoe again. So choose something that will be a good option for the whole duration of the trail. And for me, this shoe was a good option for the Slovenian mountain trail. Some facts about this shoe. It has a very sticky, very aggressive rubber and it's made for mountain running, so it is really made for these rocks and stuff. And this rubber is so sticky that you can really stand on a rock like this and you will not slide down on it. And that's very nice. I felt very safe in these shoes, even though they are trail runners. But they have a good stabilization here and they have a good stabilization here. There's like a hard part around these and you have also a good protection for your toes so that you cannot hit them on rocks which is very useful in this kind of terrain. One thing about these shoes, they only work for people that have very narrow feet because these shoes have a very narrow toe box. So if you find yourself with wider feet, you might not like these, but you can of course always try. I would also suggest to size up for at least one and a half sizes. At least I have to do it. I wear a men's size in these because they don't even produce women's size up to 43. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, one downside of this shoe is that the mesh upper rips very easily when you hit the rocks. Like, yeah, I have lots of holes in my old pairs because in the rocky terrain, maybe you just like, yeah, you hit a rock with this part and then it might just break. But you can sew them and you can also probably glue them. but. I don't think that anyone carries glue on the trail, but yeah. In general, they last for around 600 to 700 kilometers, and for the Slovenian mountain trail, one pair of shoes would probably be enough for you. On the G11, I had two pairs of shoes, but I'm still using the second pair now, so yeah, they did a lot more than these 600 kilometers. Some other facts about the shoes, they have a drop of six millimeters for people who are interested in this. And I have recommended this shoe to a lot of people I met on the G11 and so far everyone was very happy about the shoe. 
like of the people that actually tried it. Question 13, this is the last question. Recommended brands for equipment and outdoor gear. This is again a very personal question, but in general for the Slovenian mountain I would say try to have a durable gear because with all the rocks it will be very hard on your gear. Also, try to be as light as possible because you have to climb with all that stuff. And it's different walking with a backpack compared to climbing with a backpack. So opt for light equipment and don't bring what you don't need. <laughs> Recommended brands. This is again very very personal, but I will give you some recommendations of brands that I really like. So I have already showed you the last Petivo shoes and I will go with these again. Um, then recommendation for the climbing equipment. Um, so I will go with this helmet. This is a lightweight helmet from Petzl. It's called the Meteor helmet. And it has a very nice ventilation because on some days on the Savini mountain trail you will wear the helmet for the whole day. And if the helmet is not very good ventilated, then you might just get super hot or you don't want to wear the helmet at all, which is not so nice. The last time I went with a very, very heavy helmet and that was not really nice because you have to carry the helmet for the whole trail or you can send it home but if you want to spend the money it's up to you but i carried my helmet for the whole trail and it was half a kilo it was 480 grams so now this helmet is 240 grams so it's a big difference then some other brands i can recommend for gear um, for the backpack I hiked the Slovenia mountain last time with my Gossamer gear, my Reposa 60 backpack, and I was really happy with it. I also hiked the GR11 with it, and after these two trails and some smaller trails in between, the backpack has lots of holes in the side pockets, in the mesh pocket, and in the bottom part of the pack, which I fixed with Panache's tape, but I have treated myself with a new backpack. And this time I will go with the Hyperlite mountain gear, which I've tried on some overnight trips so far and I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's a more durable fabric. This is the main reason I got it. Because with all the rocks and the climbing, like when you hit your backpacks on the rocks, it's shitty when it breaks. For clothing, I think clothing in general is a very, very personal choice, but I'm a big fan of merino wool. Uh, clothing, especially for my sleeping clothes. I have Icebreaker and Devault merino pants and shirts and also I have merino wool underwear mostly because they don't smell as bad <laughs> and I'm very sensitive to um, to synthetic fibers so I started the G11 with a Patagonia sports bra which is made of polyester I think and elastan and I got a bad rash, so I had to buy a new bra and I bought the, the Icebreaker Siren bra and it's amazing. It's a super nice minimal bra, super lightweight and I'm super happy with it. So yeah, if you have a sensitive skin it might be nice to have natural fibers, but this is of course up to you. Also the general clothing, one thing I can recommend I think is the sun shirt because on the Slovenia mountain track you will, you will always be up on the high peaks sometimes there's no shade and a sun shirt will protect your skin very well from the sunburn and you don't always have to apply the sunscreen again of course on your legs if you go in shorts you need to apply it all the time okay so to finish up with the outdoor gear I think I will upload a video about outdoor gear for the Slovenia mountain trail later this season um, just because I made some switches in my gear choices and of course the climbing gear is new. I have made a self-made gear for Arakut which is hanging there and I will also show this in the next video but I have to say that maybe if you have no experience with Via Ferrata go with the original Via Ferrata kit and don't make yourself one. I just made it to save some weight. And because I have already done the trail without any climbing equipment, so I know how the trail is and what I can do, but it's not a suggestion. And also there's outdoor gear videos on my channel, so if you want to know what I'm using, 
and how I feel about the stuff that I'm using, check my channel and check the two videos. And maybe before the trail there will be the other video. I will also upload my gear list on Lighter Pack. It'll be in the description of this video and you can check it out. Okay, so that's all. If you have any further questions, you can send me a message on Instagram at Helena Hikes or you can just send a comment on this video. And I'm happy to help if you have some questions. Also, for anyone that's planning to hike the G11 or the Slovenian mountain trail and is looking for company, you can leave a comment and maybe you can connect to some other hikers that are planning to hike this year. I already know a few people that are hiking the Slovenian mountain trail this year, so I think there will be more through hikers this year compared to 2021. And I'm one of them. I don't know if I already said it, but this is my hiking announcement. I will hike the Slovenian mountain trail again because I just love this trail and I'm so excited to do it. And yeah, so I might also run into you if you're hiking the Slovenian mountain trail. And yeah, I think that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you on the trail.